guys. I've been promising you fishing stuff forever, and uh, I'm a procrastinator, but got a little time here. It's pretty windy. What I want to show you is the rig that I use from shore here when I fish on a bigger body of water from shore, this being the Missouri River. What do we have here? What I used to do was just one egg sinker, but I usually start using two, or depending on the wind, I might go more. But I'll put two sliding sinkers on there. I like egg sinkers. And then what I do is see that bead there? I put that bead down here so your sinkers aren't slapping into your knot. Um, then me, You don't need to use one of these. I'm just greedy and you'll want to check your regulations in your state, but our state you can have three hooks on each line. So I use a crappie rig. That hook's all messed up. And I put three hooks on there. Now, usually I get crazy and I even put two, three minnows on each hook. So you want to, if you're going to use this rig and do that, you're going to want to make sure you got a lot of minnows because you'll go through them quickly. But what you do, and I'll, I'll kind of show you here but I'll do it later when we're fishing. What I do is I stick a bobber. And this isn't really going to show it, but it'll show it a little bit. And I have it down. If the fish comes in, the bobber goes down. If the fish goes out, the bobber slams up. Like I said, I was just going to make this quick. I will show later it in action and actually set up in a rod holder. All right, guys, I thought I was filming, but I wasn't. But I uh, haven't even been here five minutes. Check this out. It's gotta be about a 16 and a half inch walleye. Now, I was doing all that turkey hunting and I apologize, I had a fishing video halfway set up. But I'm gonna show you the rig that I'm using and I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna tell you where I'm at, but I'm gonna show you what I'm doing and, and the situation of where I'm at so you can find it yourself. Because this is where these walleyes hang out during the day. What it is here is it's a shelf that goes out, and I'll turn the camera and show you, but it goes out and it just drops like a rock to like 30, 40 feet. Well, I just find, I cast out and it hits that deep water and my line comes all the way back and I get on that shelf line. Well, when I get on that shelf line, that's where these bad boys are. And then when it gets a little darker, they'll start coming up that shelf. But what I always do with the first fish, it's for good luck, give a little kiss, especially if I'm throwing them back. If I'm throwing them back, I always kiss them because the way I look at it is, is if you're a good kisser, they'll go out and tell their friends and then you can catch some more. That's kind of a joke I had, I've always done it, but it works. All right, guys, this is what I'm talking about. It's right here is the bluff side. When you're on the Missouri River or any big river like that that's got a usually has a high bank on one side and a low bank on the other. I am on the bluff side, so the high bank. And this is actually a spot that's cut down that's flat that uh, is on that side. But if you look out, probably about 20 yards, the shelf goes out and it gradually drops a little bit. But after out to about that 20 yards, it drops like a rock. Now I talked to one of the area guides when I was fishing out here the following day. And he told me down in that channel, it's 42 foot deep. Now usually along the Missouri River here, it's somewhere in that 30 to 40 range. I've even seen it deeper into that 60 range, depending on what part of the river you're on. So what I'm doing is I'm casting out about 50, 60 yards and I'm letting it drop all the way down into there and it's actually coming back against the shelf wall right up by shore and then I'm just kind of adjusting throughout the day they're going to be deeper right now because the females are still staged deep and the, a lot of the males are because they're screwed up with the spawn but uh I adjust and I slowly come up that ridge depending on when the light starts to go down at the end of the day because the fish will start moving up that and eventually they'll be up on that flat after dark.
weather permitting and baromic and everything like that's good. So let's take a look here. As you can see, what I did is I hooked these bobbers in between. I go between the second and third eyelet from the top. And all I do is I hook them on the string and I pull them down. Now my line is tight out into the water, but what this does is it gives a little time for a sensitive bite, but they don't feel any resistance with those egg sink sinkers sliding on the line. And then this gives a little extra line, they don't feel the pull. So if the fish come in, the bobber drops down and comes back towards the rod. If the fish goes out, you'll see here in a little bit, we'll try to find some video of when a fish is taking it up. It's a great setup. I saw this from an old timer using this and I thought it was crazy, but he caught the heck out of him and I've used it ever since then. Sometimes when it's really windy, I even take the bobber and I'll bury it down in the sand just so it isn't blowing around crazy if the fish are biting good and then it comes pulling out of the sand. Let's see if we can find this rig in use. All right, as you can see, I didn't get it on camera, but see how this bobber's way up higher? Now well, this one's kind of messing with me. I don't think we get this fish. Let's fast forward ahead and see if we can find another one. As you can see here, whoop, 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 we got action now. See how that baby jumps up? Now this one here, watch this, because when these fish come through, they come through in schools. Now, I didn't have the camera that good to get both of these, but watch this. I'm here. Now, sometimes they come in, sometimes they go out. I get my line tight, and you just wait, because usually they're sitting there, and they spin that middle around and take it in head first. Let's see here. It's coming in a little bit. So I'm trying to get the line. And waiting. Coming in again. Bam! There we go. All right. So if you watch out in the water, you'll see this one. And then I screwed up on the camera, but I want to show you when you hit these spots just right on this river, these fish come through on schools. Now, if you look in the water here, you'll be able to see it's got to come out of 42 foot of water. Boom. There you can see it. Walleye coming in. And I just throw that one on shore. The reason I do it is the pole next to it did it at the same time. Now, you can't see, and I apologize. I didn't have this set up. Here's some people that were fishing next to me. They had a dog. He was pretty friendly. I think his name was Steve or something. But he had to come over and investigate the fish. But if you watch out in the water here you'll see that I doubled up. And like I said, these fish will come through in schools and you can literally watch them go right down your setup. If you're fishing with a couple people, like in South Dakota, we can have two rods. So, you know, you get a couple guys, three guys together, what have you, there comes the fish. You'll watch them literally come right down the, the poles and it might be bing, 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 bing from left to right. Now, if you look at these, these are both kind of small. I mean, I don't know what they are, 14, 14 and a half. But uh, here on the Missouri River this time of year, they got to be 15 inches. So I'm kind of grateful a little bit more this day because they were swallowing it to beat heck. And now they were being a little more finicky today. So I was able to take the hooks out and be able to let them go. So let's let them go and uh, maybe we can get another one here. All right. We got another one. We didn't get it jumping up, but it jumped up here. Let's see if we can catch another one. Um, like I said, they were biting kind of finicky today. They were biting good, but they were really just kind of playing with it. You really had to let them take it. Now, I sped this up. I sat here quite a while, so don't just think I grabbed this and jerked it. But listen to the rod. Right there, you could hear drag. I had that fish on, and what happened here is when I'm reeling up that shelf, I must have caught the clay or the rocks on that shelf, 
and it hung up and when it hung up I must not have had the fish hung or caught that good and the fish actually got off so swing and a miss all right so we ended up catching our limit the last one was right towards dark and I didn't get it on camera but as you can see, this is a great rig. If you look at the pole on the left, see how I'm talking, how I got it down between, and that one's actually between the third and the fourth. But you just grab the line and you hook that bobber on and you pull it down. Now I usually go about three quarters of the way down to the ground. That way there's some room that it could drop down to the sand, but it also has a lot of room if it takes off. Right there is kind of your barrier. It's your strike indicator, but it's also a barrier where they don't feel anything. So. This is a great little setup. Try this. You can use this anywhere. Small streams, big streams, lakes, big rivers like this. But try it out. It's a heck of a rig. I've even seen people where they stick a slip bobber and they put it through the line. The nice thing about that is you don't have to take the slip bobber off. It goes right up in between the eyelets and you can just reel. This setup, you got to pop the bobber off. I don't mind it. These bobbers are expensive or inexpensive and it works great so next time you're out fishing give this a whirl I guarantee you people will look at you funny but you will catch fish if you're in the right spot where there's fish here's some of the fish that I caught in a couple days with this rig from shore till next time guys get out and do some fishing take a kid with try this rig out you'll love it